Benjamin Studios Publishing presents Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Barrett, read for you by Stuart Heyman. We were all sitting around on the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were, ba were betting on how many pancakes we could eat, and Grandpa was doing the flipping. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed. Even Grandpa breakfast, even Grandpa, breakfast continued quite un un uneventually. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. That night. Touched off with a pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us that bed, that best all-time bedtime story he ever told. Across an ocean over lots of huge puppy mountains, across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and, uh, of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses, and trees, and gardens around them. A schoolhouse about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. There didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that, that everyone ate came from the sky. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain. It never snowed snow. And it never blew just wind. And it rained things like it rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. The menu varied, but the time by the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds, a sunny side up eggs, moved in flour by peaches by pieces of toast, butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of all of uh, most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch, Frank Brothers, for once one day, Frank Brothers already in their rolls. Blew, blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in the baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb cup chops, becoming heavy at, at times, with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual cheer and clearing, with a wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of, Ch of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for the sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses on sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back onto the, into the earth so that the soil would be prettier for the people's flower gardens. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. One day there was nothing but Gronzilla cheese it's all day long. The next day there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long, and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye and whole white toast. Most of it was larger than they ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged, and the station department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up, and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, people piled up as much as bread as they could in their backyards. 
The, be the birds picked at it a bit, but it stayed there and got saltier and saltier. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of, how, because of its weight, so they had to close the school. Lunch, lunch one day brought 15-inch drinks of cream, cheese, and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and, and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind, acclaimed by an even worse tomato tornado. Oh, people were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. The people glued together the giant piece of stale bread that sandwiched out with peanut butter. Or took the absolute necessities with them and set sail on the rafts for a new land. After being afloat for a week, they had finally reached a small coastal town which welcomed them. The bread had held up surpri su surprisingly well. Well enough for to build a t from the temple a temple a, a houses for themselves out of it. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find them and find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used was to buying it at the supermarket. They found it odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in, in boxes, cans, and bottles. M meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No, no one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to Chew and Swallow to find out what happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The, the next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than, than usual so we could get sliding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pad of butter at the top. And we could almost smell mashed potatoes. The end. You've been listening to Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs by Judy Barrett. Read for you by Stuart Heyman. This book was copyrighted 1978 by Judy Barrett. Production copyright 2021 by Stuart Heyman and Benjamin Studios Publishers. All rights reserved.